Welcome back into Compounding Capital, and yes, we are dropping a second video of the day. This one's gonna be a little bit more interesting, I believe. And if you're new to the channel, welcome in. We work on fundamental analysis along with long-term price action. In this video, I specifically wanna talk about two different names here. Number one's going to be UPS. That recent sell-off, is this now a buying opportunity? And the second one we're gonna take a look at here is one that I've talked about numerous times, and that's gonna be SoFi. So the first stock we're getting into is going to be SoFi. Thank now we've done many different analysis on SoFi and basically between a five to $6 range is personally where I find it to be in a very, very interesting buy. Uh, for people new to the channel, as you most as most of you know, I think anywhere between $6 and $6.50, completely understand reaching in at these prices because of the growth rate of the company and the opportunity that they have. So, so if I reported earnings and the stock is down roughly 2%, now this is a stock that's kind of been front running its earnings and I warned people about this. It was trading right around $6.35, which is an entry point I personally was actually starting to look at, possibly averaging into. And then it skyrocketed up over the last few weeks to over $7.80 and now pulling back on the earnings report. Something that I was definitely concerned about with SoFi. I thought a lot of investors were front running earnings and that seems to be the case here. So I'm gonna try to make this as quick and clean as possible and hopefully you guys can follow along here. This is a company still growing extremely fast. But when we think about valuation and, inv and investing in financial institutes, one of the key areas we really wanna take a look at is going to be book value per share. Okay, so the book value of the company is around $3.92 and currently the stock is trading around $7.18. So there's a substantial premium here you're paying for for SoFi. Now this is a company still showing top line revenue growth growing at a nice clip at 20% and the book value grew year over year 15%, something I really, really like to see. The biggest opportunity SoFi has is going to be financial institution, getting assets under management. This is where I really think the multiple expansion can take place, and this book value actually becomes a little less valuable. Now, I did listen to the interview with Anthony Noto this morning, and the two areas that I really wanted to highlight and the two opportunities that I really like is, once again, assets under management, really building out their brokerage side of their business, which grew 80% is now pushing $180 million, which is very, very small. Okay. I want that everybody to understand that 80% is great, great growth. Uh, if, in order for this to start really making a dent, we need to see multiple hundred percents of growth and it having billions and billions of dollars under management. At this point in time, it's kind of a write-off. But an area that I thought he was bringing up that was pretty interesting is a refinance cycle that could be coming with lower rates on home loans. And why I like this much better is because there's an asset backing this home loan. You have the home and then you have the lien against that home, which the bank holds. With personal loans, you do not have that. And with student loans, you do not have that. So if I'm thinking to myself with an unbiased opinion, where is my concern with this bank? It's the fact that it's trading for a substantial premium and a lot of their debt, it doesn't have any assets backing them up, their personal loans and their student loans. So when we think about an economy that's starting to soften here and a labor market that's definitely starting to slow down, the areas where consumers are most likely gonna start defaulting is possibly going to be their personal loans and credit cards. And these are areas that SoFi has a tremendous amount of exposure to. Some of the areas most people are most likely not gonna make cuts is going to be obviously grocery shopping, cell phone bills, rent in or mortgage. And when we think about mortgage, that's why it's interesting if rates do come back down that SoFi really gets aggressive on the refinancing cycle that could be due. And that is where I see an opportunity along with the brokerage account. So as far as I'm concerned, I actually am gonna stick to my guns here that between that $5 and call it $6.50 mark is about where I think the price should still be for SoFi. Where the opportunity definitely comes down the road is going to be watching the brokerage accounts grow along with the refinance cycle that could be coming for mortgages. If we see rates substantially drop, the labor market remains strong, this one could absolutely grow exponentially. With book value sitting at $3.92, I understand possibly reaching for a little bit of a premium and that's why I'm giving that $5 price target to right around a $6.50 price target. Now, where it gets interesting is could we up the multiple on the stock if they do really focus on more your brokerage accounts and they're able to sustain growth in that area. If that is the case, you know, we could be definitely looking more at a buy today, which is now gonna bring us on the five-year drawdown on UPS. This stock was over $220 a share, is now fallen down to $125 a share and bounced off of those levels now sitting at $129 a share. 
paying over a 5% dividend and trading right around 21 times earnings. I think this is one we really need to dig into. This is a good quality company that's paid its dividend for over 24 years and has been raising that dividend for 14 consecutive years, which tells me that if you're a dividend investor, this is probably on your radar because a 5% dividend with a company that's had a record of paying it for 24 consecutive years and raised it over the last 14 consecutive years, this is a nice income strategy for most dividend investors. For me personally, I am a total return investor, so I am incorporating a dividend with an equity appreciation. So when we take a look at UPS and what expectations are and forecasts, we got a low of $100 a share and a high of 190. With most analysts now looking at this as a possible buy to hold, I would say sentiment around the stock is fairly neutral at these levels. And so now that I have an understanding of what people are feeling about the stock and kind of where it's trading versus where expectations could be, now I wanna plug in my own analysis and just see where we end up at. As we can see here, this was a company doing $74 billion in top line revenue, now doing 89 billion, and it's not a straight line, it's kind of just been up and down depending on economic activity. But the biggest thing that's facing UPS right now is I believe the cost rising. It's costing a lot more for these union workers to stay with UPS and they have to pay them more. And so this is definitely what's dragging down, I believe, the strength of the fundamentals underneath this company and could be an actual headache even going forward. One of the areas where we could start thinking is, can technology now start replacing some of these individuals and can they grow those fundamentals to be a little bit stronger? And I think the answer is going to be yes. And so what do we always talk about on the channel is earnings per share is always going to drive stock price. This was this company that was doing $14.75 earnings per, per share, now down to 13, now down to 7.8, and now down to 6.1. So we can see the earnings coming down and it makes sense now when we think about where the prices went from 225 down to 125, that earnings have been cut in half just like the price has been cut in half. And as you guys can see here, I'm plugging in three, four, and three. As we saw, low single digit earnings growth is most likely worth what's gonna happen with this company. And we have 12, 13, and high end 16% EBITDA margins. When we look at free cash flow, this is a company that can free cash flow anywhere between five to 10 billion pretty consistently. So with net debt sitting at $19 billion, they could basically wipe out all their debt within a four to five year period. So I would say overall the balance sheet's pretty clean here, but once again, that dividend is definitely a little bit concerning if they don't get earnings back on track, but I think they're sitting okay as of right now. After plugging in these numbers, I actually think it's a very interesting buy at these levels. I would like to get it around, I would like to get it under 120 if possible. When we look at this, $113 price target when we look at an enterprise value to EBITDA, that's looking to get right around a 13, 14% rate of return, building some safety in here. But when we look at it from a free cash flow standpoint at 142, if we average these two numbers together, we get more of a ideal price target. So we get 142 plus, call it 114, divided by two. 128 seems to be an interesting buy target. Currently, the stock is sitting at $129, which means that it's just a few dollars short of where I would like to get it. As always, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed and we will see you in the next one.